My name's Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, Death is a Red Balloon. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Our presentation tonight, the field of neurosurgery. The object in point, a small metal clip. It represents a great advancement in a highly specialized field of medicine. In this instance, it represents the difference between life and death. The case in point, Agnes Woodward Frazier. She's 27 years old, been married five years, and given birth to two children. She's in excellent physical condition by every ordinary physical test. But then her trouble isn't ordinary. Before the day she was born, one small corner of her brain was marked for disaster. Joan Mary, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost descend upon thee and dwell in thine heart forever. Amen. This child is now received into Christ's church, and the people of this congregation promise with God's help to be her sponsor to the end that she may confess Christ as her Lord and Savior and come at last to his eternal kingdom. Jesus said, Whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. Abundantly enrich her with thy heavenly grace. Bring her safely through the perils of childhood. Deliver her from the temptations of youth. And lead her to witness a good confession, to persevere therein to the end. And to thy name be all blessing and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I was just wondering how long she'd hold out. Should have put an extra diaper on her. That water might give her an idea. Okay, but this is the last time. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> you take your nap, Billy. And you can come to the dinner table tonight. All right? And that means sleep, Master William, not just lying there singing and keeping Joni awake. Champagne already? Uh-huh, in the refrigerator. Let's have it now, huh? I thought you wanted to save it for dinner. Can I have some champagne, too? No, you can't, and you won't get anything at all unless you get to sleep, you hear me? You've got to take your nap, Billy. We've got a lot to celebrate. Thank you. I am very happy. Oh, sweetie. Hmm. Hey, careful, Buster. We just had a christening. Okay, well, you better get out there and act like a hostess, then. Well, come on. I'll be there right away. Tom. Yeah? I've got a terrible headache. You want something for it, honey? It's terrible. Agnes. Agnes, what's the matter? Agnes, what's the matter? Oh. There's blood in it. Send this to the lab. What is it, do you know? 
Mr. Fraser, your wife has suffered what we call a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Bleeding in the spaces around the brain. Would she be all right? It's a little early to tell right at the moment. Are you absolutely sure that there was no injury? She didn't fall or hit her head in any way. I told you she was perfectly all right. I was just standing there talking to her in the kids' room. All of a sudden, she just collapsed. I caught her before she hit the floor. Can I see a doctor? It'd be better if you waited a while longer. She's still unconscious. What happens now? What are you going to do for her? There are some tests that'll tell us exactly where the damage is. Unfortunately, in this case, they can't be made for 10 or 12 days. 12 days? Aren't you going to do anything now? There's nothing we can do now, except keep her quiet. That and call in a specialist, get his opinion on the case. Another doctor? What for? You've taken good care of us. You deliver the babies. We'll stick by anything you say. That's not the point, Mr. Fraser. No one doctor knows everything about medicine. In your wife's case, I think it's very important that we call in a specialist to see her. A neurosurgeon. If you have no personal preference, I'd suggest Dr. Bowen. He's one of the best in the field, in my opinion. Whatever you say. But isn't there something that can be done now? I, I mean, instead of just letting her lie there? Look at it this way, Mr. Fraser. A hemorrhage inside the brain is like a bomb exploding in there. The skull is rigid. It can't expand. There's no escape for the pressure that builds up. That's why there's such a sudden loss of consciousness. All we can do is keep her quiet, prevent further bleeding. Can't you operate? I'd like to consult with Dr. Bowen before we make any definite decision. There are a whole series of tests to be made which will help us reach that decision. The first consideration in a neurological disorder is to determine the location of the difficulty. Therefore, a thorough neurological examination is made. There is also a complete physical examination, including a careful study and evaluation of the blood. Dr. John Bowen, the neurosurgeon consulted, examines x-rays of the skull. Occasionally, there are secondary changes in the skull which indicate an underlying disease process. Another method of studying brain activity is a mechanical recording of the electrical impulses emitted by brain tissue. The electroencephalograph records the impulses of the brain as the electrocardiograph records the action of the heart. The eight styluses trace out the electrical patterns of the brain areas and give still another clue to the nature of the trouble. The brain is the control center of the body. A disturbance or functional loss of a part of the body known to be controlled by a specific brain area allows the physician to work backward and discover the specific area of the brain lesion. As the visual pathway is frequently involved in cases of brain damage, a study of the visual field is an extremely important diagnostic aid. They're fine, honey. Believe me, I tell you if they weren't. Bill, he's trying to get her to talk already. They'll have a wonderful time when she's a little older. Tom, I want to see him. Did you ask the doctor? Good morning. Dr. Baum. All right, Warden. I've done my time. When do I go home? Don't tell me we haven't made you comfortable. Oh, hospitals are just dandy if you're sick. All I want to do is go home. I don't think we ought to worry about that just yet. Tom, will you talk to this man? If he lets me go home, I'll stay in bed and keep quiet, I promise. The doctor's right, honey. We don't want to make you sick again. I know you gave us a couple of bad weeks there. But it's silly. There's no reason for it. I've got a couple of kids at home I haven't seen for almost two weeks. They'll grow up thinking they haven't got a mother of their own. Look at me. I feel absolutely wonderful. I feel better than I did before all this happened. She certainly looks good, Doctor. I've been overdoing it quite a bit lately. Don't you think I might have just been a little overtired? I don't think it's quite that simple. Anyway, there's one more test that needs to be done. It's called an angiogram. We inject an opaque dye into the artery which leads to the brain, and then take x-rays of the dye as it circulates through the brain. What's all that for? It's the best way we know to determine the cause and location of the bleeding. You inject it right into the artery? We use an anesthetic. There's no pain involved. Is it really necessary? Yes, it is. It's ridiculous. I've never felt better in my life. Doctor, will you give me a written guarantee? No more tests? This is the last needle? This one will give us the answer we're looking for. What do you think? Excellent pictures. A little below the anterior communicating. Could be worse. They all could, but you wonder how. Would you ask Mr. Fraser to come in, please? The husband? Can't say I envy you. I've got to operate at 11 o'clock. I'll see you later at the hospital. Mr. Fraser? 
Fraser. Dr. Sandberg, my associate. How do you do? Hello. Excuse me, doctor. Nice to meet you, Mr. Fraser. It's about the test? It's what I thought, Mr. Fraser. It's what we call a berry aneurysm. You can see it here yourself on the angiogram. Is that the cause of all the trouble? For some reason, there's a defect in the wall of an artery. Over a period of time, it weakens and dilates. Generally, we can't notice anything wrong until after it bursts, as your wife's did. What about her having the baby? You think that could have caused it? That could have happened at any time. It has no relation to pregnancy. Well, what about the children? Is there a chance they'd have it too? It's not hereditary. It could be present in anyone, in you, in me. An aneurysm is one of the most difficult things we have to deal with. It's completely unpredictable. Actually, of course, it happens to very few people. Well, is it cured now? No. The rupture is sealed over, and the brain is recovering from the effects of the bleeding. But the defect of the balloon still remains. Does that mean it can happen again? It could. What are the chances? It's hard to say. You mean she might die? No, I don't mean that at all. It isn't possible to predict the outcome of any individual case. So all I can give you are statistics. Approximately 25% of the people with congenital aneurysms die the first time it ruptures. However, the possibility of another hemorrhage is about 50-50. And the second time, the mortality rate is much greater. Isn't there anything you can do? Can't you operate? Yes, we can operate. But it's a dangerous procedure. How dangerous? I don't know. The statistics on a surgical risk vary considerably. If the risk were only 1% and the patient died, well, to that patient, the operation has a 100% mortality. Your wife could possibly go through her entire normal life and never have any more trouble with it. But in my opinion, surgery is less hazardous than the alternative. However, this is a decision that you and your wife have to make. I can't do it for you. Still 50-50, isn't it? One chance out of two. Didn't happen today, but it could be tomorrow. Got by this week, all right, but what about next week? What about next month or next year? Could be any time. Believe me, Mr. Fraser, I wish the job were a lot more simple than it is. But the human brain is an extremely delicate structure. The trouble may appear to you to be fairly simple. But as you can see here, that aneurysm lies deep within the substance of the brain. To gain access to it, we have to make a window in the skull to work through and then work down through certain vital centers which control various motor activities of the body. We have to be more than just careful, or we could possibly injure the brain and some of its functions. Damage one area, you affect speech. Another, you disturb vision or hearing or muscular coordination. There's a good deal of equipment packed into the human skull, Mr. Fraser. This is called a circle of Willis, and this is the anterior cerebral artery where the aneurysm is just below the anterior communicating artery. Once we get to it, all that's needed is to put a small metal clip across the base of the artery. You mean that'd solve the problem? Yes, completely, provided there are no complications. I'm sorry, I don't mean to frighten you. It's essential you understand the risks involved. It's the only way you and your wife can possibly make a decision. If you like, I'd be glad to call on another specialist for consultation. No, we trust you, doctor. It's just that it's hard to take, I guess. We've been together five years. All of a sudden, I don't know if she's going to be alive from one minute to the next. I love her. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to figure it? What would you do, doctor? Probably the same thing you're doing. I'll talk to Agnes. It's rough. It's plenty rough. You've just got to face it. You can't ask anybody to decide a thing like that. He's the doctor. He ought to go ahead and operate if he has to and not say anything about it. He's not God, honey. He can't decide. He can't take it into his own hands. He gave it to us as straight as he could. What do you think, dear? I don't know. I just don't know. Yes, you do. You know it as well as I do. Whatever the chance is, we've got to take it. I can't go on living like this. 
Not knowing what second it might hit me. I'd be afraid to trust myself around the children. Suppose I was driving and it happened. It's not fair. Not fair to them, not fair to you. Or to me. I mean, knowing you'd be watching me, waiting. Knowing every time you went to the office, you'd be wondering if I'd be alive when you came back. Every time I got out of your sight. Let's talk to somebody else. We'll talk to another doctor. Who? Who else can we talk to but each other? I think anything is better than not knowing. Living with a time bomb in my head, not knowing when it was set to go off. I know what it would do to you after a while. To the children, to me. Tom, tell him to go ahead. Tell him to operate. Agnes. Agnes. Tell him, Tom. Tell him as soon as possible. Hello, Dr. Bowen. Hello, Lou. Haven't seen you around lately. What service are you on now? Gynecology on the last month. Got a small audience today for you, if you don't mind. Hello, glad to have you. Doctor, this is my brother, Hoyt. He's a medical student. Hoyt, how are you? Fine, sir. Sorry, but I've got to get moving on this. Watch it close. Might be a long time before you see surgery done like this again. Coagulation set of 35. Ready? Go ahead. Saw guide. Watch how the flexible saw is inserted between the burrow holes drilled in the skull. The saw guide prevents any damage to the dura and underlying brain. Kelly. before he cuts it. That's so he won't damage any blood vessels on the surface of the brain.
More plugins. Lots of them. Keep them wet. Retractor. They're retracting the cerebrum. This is where they really start to work. How is she? Blood pressure's up a bit, but she's all right. They're down to the circle of Willis. Doctor. This is where you separate the men from the boys. They're right at the artery. Why can't they get it? There's so much blood, it's hard to see anything. They got both suctions working now. Get two more pints of blood. The anesthesiologist's getting ready to pump in blood under pressure if the blood loss gets too great. Can't they just clamp the artery? He's trying to. But he only gets one chance, and it has to be right. A little lower. Kind of rough, huh? Wonderful. Just can't say it, I guess. It's wonderful. This looks like the festive hour. I hope you're not celebrating leaving us. A toast to our daughter's christening. It's been a little delayed, and we started with champagne. Would you join us, Doctor? I'd love to, but I have surgery in half an hour. I just dropped by to wish you luck. But you have all the luck you need. Thanks to you, Doctor. Doctor, thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Mrs. Fraser. Mr. Fraser? Doctor? Honey? Your health. Your health. Congenital aneurysm is not strictly speaking a disease, but a structural weakness, like a chain with one defective link that may snap under tension. The defect does not necessarily occur in a cerebral artery, but may be located anywhere in the body. Most surgical procedures treating the condition involve far less hazard than brain surgery. It's a difficult condition, difficult to diagnose, difficult to treat. But for the 1% of our population afflicted with congenital aneurysm, the advances in the diagnostic and surgical techniques of the medical profession make the future increasingly bright. <laughs>